Now, this is certainly, as you both know, one of my favorite subjects in terms of innovation and, and, and what's going on, getting ahead of disease. Do we have anything new in this regard in terms of getting ahead of disease? We're, we're using technology to really do that. Uh, and I know you had a session with uh, Vice President uh, Biden uh, during this trip. What came out of it? Well, I think what he's doing is bringing together a lot of different disciplines. We're now seeing genomics uh, playing a major part in understanding the causes of, uh, of cancer and also the therapy of cancer. We're also looking at immunotherapy, as, uh, and he's bringing together big data. And big data was really a major topic of this entire uh, gathering here about how it could help uh, bring new understanding to healthcare. I want to ask you about big data because this is obviously critical. Toby, I think you and I were having a conversation about a year ago, and you said to me, What are the main things that lead to sick uh, sickness? Number one, behavior. No, and I don't know if this is the order. Number two, where you live. And number three, genes. Do I have that right? Well, I, I think um, the main one is behavior, uh, smoking, uh, lack of exercise, uh, obesity. Those are the three things in behavior. And then genomics is a distant uh, second. And, and where you live in terms of it, what, a, a, what ma a major influence, yes. I think that's fascinating. And, yeah, and your economic uh, status. John. So you were talking about getting out ahead of cancer yeah. and prevention and early detection. and. We've talked before about using DNA technology to detect early colon cancer, especially in vulnerable groups that don't access health care very well. And we're working on an innovation that's very exciting to detect the number one gynecological cancer, which is endometrial cancer, and essentially using the same kinds of technology to detect early pre and early cancer uh, in women who are harboring endometrial cancer using that same technology. Why, why do you feel like we are closer than we ever have been in terms of, I mean, a cure is obviously really positive thinking. I mean, there are certain cancers that we're nowhere near that. But, but, but how would you say, in ter what would you say in terms of where we are toward that regard? Well, I think understanding the nature of cancer and the various cancers and there are several hundred different cancers as Dr. Cosgrove mentioned there are genetic predispositions and lifestyle dis predispositions and the, the entire industry is coming together to share the data of how you detect it and how you treat it uh, and the speed with which those um, interventions and collaborations are happening is really quite stunning uh, and there are drugs now that we didn't have before that's in combination are controlling more cancer. So I think we're making strong progress. Uh, this is not going to be a short, a short uh, a journey, however. Yeah. And I think the other thing you have to remember, it's always better not to get cancer. And the number, there's a couple of things you can do to prevent it. And first of all, smoking. We still have 22% of the United States that smokes. 22%, huh? And, 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 and Europe, but that number is much higher, right? And going up, actually, scarily in the United States. And the other thing uh, that we have is obesity, which is now contributing to all kinds of cancers, colorectal cancer, breast cancer, et cetera, it is a major uh, influence on getting cancer. So, and early screening. You know, right now, we've only got about 60% uh, of people who get their regular colonoscopies. And there's a tremendous disparity depending upon your economic uh, situation uh, with uh, people who are uh, less disposed to get those things who are lower in the economic ch uh, chain. And is this, are we at this position largely because of the mapping of the genome and that we know much more? We're, I mean, I, I think... For, for starters, we, we know so much more, and we know that smoking causes cancer. So we've, we, we've stopped smoking, although this is very troubling that you say the numbers are going up again. We know about heart disease, the number one killer, uh, and, and, and so we've changed our diets. We don't know as much about the brain. And I'm wondering if we are on the cusp of something with regard to things like autism and Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's. Well, you mentioned the investment in basic science is critical. And the, the president's drawn attention to that recently, as you know, with the Brain Initiative mapping brain networks. But I think each of these investments in the basic sciences leads to new understanding of disease mechanisms, predispositions, and how we treat them. So I think we're getting there. I think also the entire, we've talked about the fourth industrial revolution here at Davos, yeah. and the hyperconnectivity and the multiple sectors that are all working together. What I see here, more even so than the last four years, is the coming together of all the different healthcare sectors to work together to speed uh, us forward. So I think that's a very positive thing. We saw that today in the governor's meeting with the health ministers mm -hmm. and the different um, uh, approaches that are taking place in the developing nations versus the developed nations, sharing that information, learning from each other, 
And uh, I think that's all very encouraging. And, and how does big data fit into this? Well, big data is clearly going to be able to pick up things that we had no idea before. We've seen, for example, uh, the mm -hmm. effect of uh, hypertensive drugs on, on various cancer, which we never would have expected without looking uh, for that uh, with big data. And you would have never even done the study in the conventional way. And so now we're seeing incredible uh, correlations that we hadn't anticipated before, and we think that we can move drugs faster through the approval process by using this big data. And yet, with all of the innovations and the success that you are both talking about, there's also such a pressure on cost. Are you still yeah. seeing that kind of pressure in terms of on the hospital level and this need to get scale because oh, of the cost pressure? Absolutely. And what we heard repeatedly today and, and throughout the week is this move to value based health care. Yeah. And that's better outcomes at lower cost. And your point about big data is terribly important. And in the Optum Labs uh, innovation that we've put together, we now have 20 partners from the life science companies, the policy makers, the academic medical centers, the pharma companies, all coming together with this big data to try to mine the data and understand what works in healthcare and what does it cost so that we can get better outcomes at lower cost. So it's the big data is a, a step to get there. It's the analysis of the big data that will get us there. But I think we're going to see big, big changes. I think one of the things we're concerned about, though, particularly in cancer, is the cost of drugs. The average cost of drugs now for treating a patient for one year is $100,000. Wow. And uh, we've seen a huge escalation of our pharmaceutical bills over the last year, 19% increase in our cost of pharma in our pharmacy. Uh, and this is uh, not going to be sustainable. Uh, if, and, uh, and if we're going to control the cost, we also have to control the cost of uh, pharmaceuticals. Well,